Thank you very much for waiting, ladies and gentlemen. We will now begin the press conference to announce the laureates for the 2015 Kyoto Prize. Thank you very much for gathering in spite of your very busy schedules. If I may introduce myself, I am Kata Oka. I'm with Inamori Foundation. I ask you for your kind cooperation. Let me now introduce the participants. Seated from your left, we have the Kyoto Prize Executive Committee Chairman, Professor Emeritus of Kyoto University, Dr. Shigetada Nakanishi. Next to him, the Kyoto Prize Committee Chairman for Advanced Technology, President of Fukuoka Women's University, Dr. Chisato Kajiyama. Next to him, Kyoto Prize Committee Chairman for Basic Sciences, Professor Emeritus of Kyoto University, Dr. Fumitaka Sato. Finally, member of Kyoto Prize Executive Committee, President of Kyoto City University of Arts, Dr. Kiyokazu Washida. We are videotaping this press conference. It will be uploaded this evening in Japanese and English languages onto the website of Inamori Foundation to make it accessible globally as well. I will now explain the materials in your handouts. There are three materials. First of all, the material with the white cover gives you the introduction of the laureate, a summary of the achievements, and the CV. It's a press release document. The, and the document with the green cover explains the Kyoto Prize and the Inamori Foundation, and also includes the experts who participated in the selection process of the 2015 Kyoto Prize. Also, the portraits and a list of photographs of the laureates are attached as well. If you need any of them, please remind one of the staffs from the public relations of our foundation. Please take a look at this press release document. First of all, Chairman of the Kyoto Prize Executive Committee, Dr. Shigetada Nakanishi, will announce the three laureates for this year, which will be followed by the detailed achievements explanation for each laureate in the categories. As for the questions, we will entertain your questions at the very end. Chairman Nakanishi, please. I will now announce the laureates. 2015 Kyoto Prize Laureate for Advanced Technology in the prize field of material science and engineering goes to a Japanese national, Dr. Toyoki Kunitake, age 79, chemist. He is the president of Kita Kyushu Foundation for the Advancement of Industry, Science and Technology. He is awarded for pioneering contributions to the material sciences by discovering synthetic uh, bilayer membranes and creating the field of chemistry based on molecular self-assembly. Next, the laureate for basic sciences in the prize field of earth and planetary sciences, astronomy and astrophysics, the laureate is Dr. Michel Mayor, Switzerland, age 73. He is astrophysicist and he is Professor Emeritus of University of Geneva. He is awarded the prize for outstanding contributions in evolving a new vision of the universe through the discovery of extrasolar planet. Finally, the laureate for arts and philosophy is awarded in the prize field of theater and cinema to Mr. John Neumeyer, who has dual citizenship of Germany and the United States. Age 73, he is a choreographer. He is intendant and artistic director of the Hamburg Ballet. He is awarded for being a choreographer who developed the 20th century ballet to new levels and continues to lead the global dance scene today. These are three are the 
laureates for 2015 Kyoto Prize. They are all very well and active. This is the 31st Kyoto Prize to be awarded this year, and we have awarded 99 individuals and one organization. Therefore, we mark 100 laureates this year. As chairman of the Kyoto Prize Executive Committee, it gives me great pleasure to report to you on this, and I ask you for your kind support to the Kyoto Prize in the future as well. Thank you very much. Now, let us move to the introduction of achievement of each of the laureate. First, in the category of advanced technology, Dr. Toyoki Kunitake will be introduced by Chairperson Dr. Kajiyama. Explanation will use the slides. Please refer to page one of your handouts. Now, Chairperson Kajiyama, please. Yes, thank you. This year, Price field is material science and engineering in advanced technology. Now, this is my pleasure to introduce to you the achievements of the laureates, Dr. Toyoki Kunitake. Already, Dr. Nakanishi explained the citation, so I will directly go into the details. On this slide, you can find the upper portion of phospholipid. We have biological membrane, for example, the blood cells or the leukocytes. In any of the biomembrane, phospholipids have the bilayer membrane in their structure. Therefore, our red cells or red blood cells and white blood cells have the bilayer. Usually we call those biomembrane. We used to believe that phospholipid or biolipids were the only material for the biomembrane. So that was the belief up until 1977. Having said that, however, in lower parts, you can find synthetic lipid, ammonium, plus simple alkyl chain, that's the zigzag lines. Those are called alkyl chain, hydrophobic alkyl chains. Compared with the Phospholipid. Synthetic lipid has the extremely simple structure, but he synthesized with synthetic lipid to try to form the membrane. Then, as you can see on the electro micrograph, bilayer membrane on the lower right happened to have the bilayer. It's not polite to say that it happened. However, that was the first discovery of the bilayer membrane. And simple synthetic lipid could form the biomembrane. Therefore, now the synthetic biomembrane is now possible to be produced. Then what are the molecules required for the molecular structure for biomembrane of biolayers? Dr. Kunitake was the expert for the organic chemistry. He tried every kinds of molecules in A that found a compound which forms bilayer membrane one alkyl chain or two, three, four types of alkyl chains. So he tried to use any of those, and he confirmed that the bilayer membrane is possible to be produced. Now, B, that is the compound which forms monomolecular membrane. You can see the hydrophilic group on the edges that attach to the water. That's the blue circle. So this is principally monomolecular. However, that can form the bilayer membrane. But one caution, soap has just one alkyl chain, but which cannot make a bilayer membrane. What is necessary for forming the bilayer? Something rigid is required. 
alkyl chain is rigid. That means that if we have two or more of alkyl chain, then structure is solid or the rigid. That's what I mean by saying rigid segment. In the monomolecular portion, then rigid segment was inserted. In the sense of the monomolecular membrane, rigid segments are required. And for the bilayer membrane, they can use as they are. Now moving to the next slide. This is the synthetic chemistry of organic materials was the new field. Then bilayer membrane, like the bio membrane represented by A, is possible to be formed. And the B, monomolecular membrane, is also possible. But anyway, the both sides of up and down membrane sides are attaching to the water. And various type of aggregation form was possible, including rod, tubular, or globule. Basically, in our body, we have a lot of biomembrane, but our body is composed of full of water. In the water, we have the bilayer membrane of the biomembrane. That means that the red blood cells or white blood cells are flowing in water. As represented in A, in the bilayer membrane, there are water. Therefore, the blue circle should be hydrophilic. But alkyl chains are hydrophobic. Therefore, this is the good balance of the hydrophilic as opposed to hydrophobic. But that was now discovered to be possible with the synthetic molecule that is represented in B. However, Dr. Kunitake expanded that idea to the broader spectrum of the space. That means that the solvophilic portion as opposed to solvophobic were found instead of the hydrophilic as opposed to hydrophobic. So expanded the concept to use the solvophilic and solvophobic. Therefore, alkyl chain like is on the edge in green balls. And then instead of water, that could be the fluoride or fluorine. Then solubophilic portion can attach to the fluorine. And inside of the both ends of the green balls, those are the solubophobic. Therefore, this concept development was remarkable. Moving to the next slide. Now, Dr. Kunitake discovered the synthetic bio bilayer. Then that is now having the ripple effect of achievements that has the application for medical and diagnostic testing and IT or environmental and energy. Therefore, he created the field of chemistry based on molecular self-assembly. That is the ultra-thin film. That has the great future potential. Material science will have the great potential to the future. Thank you very much. Next, uh, regarding Dr. Michel uh, Mayo, laureate for basic sciences, Dr. Sato will explain. Uh, we will use the slides. Please look at page five and onwards in your handouts. For earth and planetary sciences, uh, we have the laureate, uh, Dr. Mayo, and he is uh, being awarded for the outstanding contributions in evolving a new vision of the universe through the discovery of extrasolar planet. 20 years ago, please go to the next slide. 20 years ago, Dr. Mayo discovered the extrasolar planet or exoplanet for the first time. Uh, 
For many years, everyone thought about exoplanets from hundreds of years ago, probably. But it was a specific discovery done for the first time, done by Dr. Mayor. He's being awarded not only for the discovery, but also for the outstanding contributions in evolving a new vision of the universe, it says. Following his discovery in the field of astronomy has changed greatly, so it has developed into enormously great and big field. And it all leads from the discovery done 20 years ago by Dr. Mayor. Of course, that discovery in itself was a big surprise because orbital period for the Earth is a year, but uh, it only has 4.2 days of orbital period. The mass, Mj, means comparable to that of Jupiter. Thinking of the solar system, we have lighter light inner planets and heavier outer planets. So the discovery was quite unusual in itself. The radio velocity method was used. Doppler effect was utilized. Measuring the Doppler shift in the spectrum. Different advances in technologies contributed to this. The technical, technological breakthrough was not made by a huge telescope as such. The top left picture is the telescope used in, at the University of Geneva, and uh, you'll find uh, this sort of a thing in the municipal science museums. Therefore, the telescope itself was not that special. The special technology involved that of spectrograph, the light of the speed of light is uh, 300,000 kilometers, but it, it uh, can measure movement in the order of one meter per second with this spectrograph. Low temperature technologies and high technologies were utilized. His discovery, of course, became a trigger, which was followed from the next year by other activities. Different sorts of uh, exoplanets were discovered. If you look at the graph on the right-hand side, discoveries are increasing largely in more recent years because of the launch of the Kepler Space Observatory in 2009, which led to large increase in the number of discoveries. And the varieties of exoplanets were discovered. And we talk about diversity of exoplanets. You have something like the top right, when everything is found in the plane, sometimes they deviate from the plane. In the solar system, it uh, rotates, uh, uh, revolves uh, uh, in the same direction, but uh, in some cases, there are planets going in the different opposite directions. In relation to Kyoto, Kyoto Prize, going back 20 years ago, Dr. Chushiro Hayashi 
was awarded the prize for the theoretical development of the formation of the solar system. That variety was so large that the general understanding was not enough and sufficient. With the discovery of the exoplanets, people tend to think, oh, well, would there be anything habitable like the Earth? Close to 2,000 has been found in the past 20 years. Dr. Mayor and his group uh, discovered about 200 or so. This shows that uh, habitable planets are being talked about, and uh, we are looking for habitable planets as the next challenge. So the single discovery by Dr. Mayor became a trigger to develop this field into a big field, and so his discovery was indeed a trigger in that sense. And therefore, we talk about the outstanding contributions in addition to the discovery. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, the category of art and philosophy laureate for this year is Mr. John Noem Mayer, member of the Kyoto Prize Committee. Dr. Washida is going to give us the explanation. Page 9, please. Thank you very much. This year, in the category of arts and philosophy, prize field is theater and cinema. And this year's laureate is the choreographer, Mr. John Neumeyer. We are very happy to announce the name of the laureate. As you can see, he was born in America. He has the nationality of the United States, but in his 20s, he moved to Europe, started with the Stuttgart, and then moving to Frankfurt and Hamburg. In more than a half century, he has been active in Germany. He also has the German nationality. In the field of dance and choreography in 1999, the laureate was Mr. Maurice Bejal, and in 2007, Ms. Pina Bausch was the laureate. So in the field of dance or choreography, Mr. John Neumer is the third laureate in this field. Now let me introduce the profile and achievement of Mr. John Neumeyer. Mr. John Neumeyer was born in the United States in 1942. He majored at the university English literature and theater studies. Then he moved to Europe and he started his activity as a dancer or a choreographer. After that, he was assigned to be the art director for the Hamburg Ballet. Since then, for more than 40 years, he has been always in the front line of the ballet arena, and he has produced and announced many of the masterpieces, not only in Germany, but in the world. Many first-class ballet groups is enjoying the performance of his masterpieces. He has given uh, lots of advices to ballet community. Therefore, in the whole world of the ballet, he has been given the major influences. Next slide. And he has the strong interest in Japanese culture, especially no or the haiku, and those are reflected in his pieces he produced. For example, in 1989, he produced the seven haiku of the moon. 
In this work, he excellently described the delicate sensibility of Japanese or the lyricism. In addition to the production of the pieces, but also he is widely promoting the ballet culture. For example, the last two weeks of every year's season is named to be the Hamburg Ballet Days. New pieces were performed first in the world or the first class ballet group are invited. Not only the ballet people, but also the fans and audiences are gathering in Hamburg. This has been continued to be held for more than 40 years. And he is very active in education. In 1978, he established the Hamburg Ballet School. Many young people, including Japan, from the all over the world, they get to the Hamburg Ballet School trying to become the great ballet dancer. Recently, he established a national youth ballet. He is guiding the young generation and also contributing to the regions and his community. He has his own collection, especially the Nijinsky-related collection is very famous. In order to convey this collection to the future generation, he established the foundation John Neumeyer. He started with ballet, with a storytelling type of ballet, not only having the traditional conveyance, but also he greatly expanded the potential of the bodily expression unique to dance. He greatly feels the two ballets. One is the dramatic ballet, which has the description of the human emotion, but the other one is the abstract ballet, which does not have the narratives. But these two were fused in the beautiful manner in Mr. Neuermer's pieces and he made his own art of ballet to the newer level of the art. Next slide, please. In Mr. Nomaya's masterpieces on the stage, that is expressed on the stage in very humane way. In opera, storytelling is very important. However, in dance, storytelling or the narratives were regarded as the secondary in the past. However, Mr. Neumeyer used the dance as his own language of vocabulary, more than our own language. Therefore, he pursued to the perfection of the expression of the bodily language. And in The Lady of the Camellias, in different scenes, the emotional fluctuation or the different state of the internal emotions of the Lady of the Camellias and lovers were described. And the audience can have the empathy with those internal emotions of the dancers. So this story was made 100 years ago. However, audience can be moved in the fresh manner and the fresh emotion. And he had the Sleeping Beauty or the Nutcracker, so those were the classic, but also in the new pieces, he intertwined the reinterpretation in the modern ways. For example, in the work of illusion like Swan Lake, he boldly translated that Swan Lake, which is the one of the three major ballets, and the hero is now the person in existence in history, Ruth Biff II. And he added the another dancer as his shadow in order to express the conflicts of the King Ruth Biff. By having this Mizasen, the audience can see the internal conflicts of one man and also play within the play was used for the insertion of the famous scene of the Swan Lake. 
In that sense, in different contexts and with reinterpretation and adding the new perspective, he had a great renewal of the ballet as an art. Also, in order to further advance his own ballet, not only the workpieces of ballet with the narrative nature, he has approached for the visualization of the music. For example, he made a choreograph for the music of the Third Symphony of Gustav Mahler, that is abstract pieces. In general, those are called symphonic ballet. There is no clear story telling. However, Mr. Neumayer expressed the emotion or the ideas which is underlying in the music is excellently presented to the audience through the bodily expression of the dancer. And the level of the expression of the enriched emotion in ballet in his this choreography is equal to the narrative ballet. He believes that he can express the full spectrum of human emotion and the state of mind with the ballet or the dancing, which is very unique to the art of dance. By so doing, he has a persuasiveness and inspiration. And first-class ballet companies want to add this series of Mr. Noya Maya's productions. And for dancers, they can grow when they danced his pieces and also including the audiences. The whole community of the ballet are getting more matured and that has been already repeated. Therefore, Mr. Neumayer will continue to influence in the community of dance in the ballet. Thank you. Thank you very much. So those are the achievements of the laureates. Now we would like to move to the Q&A. If you have the question, could you please raise your hand? The microphone is coming to you. Please identify yourself, your name and the company. Please ask any questions. Thank you. I'm Mori from Chunichi newspaper. Question to Dr. Kajiyama. You said for bilayer membrane. I want to ask what will be the potential application in more specific ways? What will be the actual images? Let me respond. You want to know how that technology is applied and is going to be applied in the future. As I mentioned, fundamentally, the characteristic is the thinness. How thin, you may ask, in the reverse osmosis membrane for the desalination from seawater to fresh water, thickness is 100 micrometer, micrometer, that's the order. But the biomembrane, as you know, 10 nanometer only. So a lot of difference. 10 to the power of 3 is the great difference between the two. For example, towards the 100 micrometer, if we use 10 nanometer to replace them, then dividing the ions or the permeation of the water could be changed. The speed can be changed with a difference of 10,000 times or 20,000 times of the difference in speed. Therefore, we say that the flow velocity or the flow bundle, in that sense, thinness will allow a lot of the flow bundle in the same instantaneous seconds. Then what would be the application? A lot of people are paying attention to the fuel cell. Membrane for fuel cell has to permeate the hydrogen or inhibit the 
polymers or the heavy molecules. And environment is harsh. 400 or 500 centigrade is the medium range. And the high temperature is now 800 centigrade. And many of the research has been going on. But in the middle range of the temperature, namely say in a 400 centigrade, now membrane is possible to be used. But further pursuit is required. And the second requirement is the area. Larger area is required. And then mixing uh, different kinds of molecular components, then with the molecular self-assembly, they have the good flow bundle or the flow velocity, and also the size can be rather sizable. Usually, we use reverse osmosis for the desalination from seawater to fresh water, as I mentioned before, and electrolyte membrane are another application. And one promising area is the medical application. Different ions are flowing, cation or anion or neutral ones. Hydrophilix is required as an element. But for the outside of the two bilayers, it's not so strong. Therefore, anion type polymer is inserted in the bilayer as a glue. Then very thin, however, very flexible, and the strength is required. In the area of anion, anion measurement device is already marketed in the commercial field. So ion division is essential for the blood analysis. But most promising application in future is fuel cell. Okay, thank you. Any other person? Yes, please. I'm Matsuo. I'm with Kyoto Shinbun. I have a question to Dr. Sato. Dr. Mayor, therefore, has discovered that there are such things as exoplanets. Do we already know as to what sort of elements make up the exoplanets or what sort of an environment it has? How much do we know? With the launch of the Kepler Space Observatory, I said that the discoveries have increased in number. But the host, there was a small planet crossing in front of the host star, and therefore, in order to look at the mass, Doppler method need to be used together. But as for the atmosphere of the planet, that is the actual target for the current observation. A certain Japanese group is also working on that. I think uh, you can read that the Subaru telescope is also being used. So there is the host star and the planet. And with the transit method, there is a dimming of the light brightness of or the light of the host star, which has been observed. But a very small part of the dimmed light needs to be sorted out and differentiated in more detail. When you are talking about the atmosphere, and therefore that is leading to bioastronomy, for instance, looking at the composition of the planet atmosphere, which you are asking about. We still do not have any definite answer for that. But there are various uh, programs for observing the planet atmosphere as well. We have a large dis number of discoveries already in place, close to 2,000. So I'm sure there would be new developments. But 
I think uh, we are shifting more towards uh, the analysis for the planet atmosphere composition, just as you mentioned. Thank you very much. Any other questions, please? I am Ishikawa. I'm with Kyodo News. I have a question once again for clarification to Dr. Sato. As a lay person, when we talk about planets uh, apart from solar systems, uh, do they, are they also visible? But the, f the fact that uh, Dr. Mayo made this discovery first, uh, what was the significance and how was it done? Well, he used the radio velocity method. There are two main methods. One is radio velocity method. There's something close to the sun, and if you have planets, what is orbiting will orbit around the gravity. And of course, the sun, like a star, will also be fluctuating because of that. So you tend to you try to measure that. If the planet is a low mass planet, the host star will hardly fluctuate or move. Dr. Mayor discovered that the host star was also fluctuating because of a Jupiter-like mass planet. What is increasing in number is to observe the periodic dimming of the star observed by the transit method. I believe it said in the Nature magazine that it's like a fly crossing in front of a car's headlight. So there is instantaneous dimming, and uh, the accuracy is to that degree. And it's faster utilizing that method. I said that uh, so far there has been about uh, 2,000 discoveries, and Dr. Mayor and his group discovered about 200. And with the launch of the Kepler Space Observatory, the number has increased. Apart from that, gravitational lens was used, leading to 10 or 20 discoveries. Does that answer your question? Are there any further questions? No further questions? If there are none, we would like to close the press conference to announce the laureates for this year's Kyoto Prize. Thank you very much.